and everybody back in their basement because somebody's using my edit suite. So have you heard this amazing story? UAP air traffic control directed energy weapons using neutrinos in Antarctica. Mm, maybe. The story broke from this guy. In 2010, I was selected to go down to the South Pole Station in Antarctica for an entire year by Raytheon Polar Services as an employee of a third party contractor for the National Science Foundation. The ice cube neutrino detector is presented as a passive listening device for the purposes of the science as presented. But I'm gonna skip right through the chase, folks. It is effectively a multifaceted directed energy weapons platform that I will uh, list rapidly a few things that it can do. Vehicle detection. We're learning that these off-world craft, on-world craft, ours or other nations are also emitting neutrinos. So this makes the South Pole Station effectively an air traffic control station for this new level of equipment that nobody's discussing. Hang on a minute, I know who he is. He's the same person who I did a film a few years ago who was miraculously cured by a CIA doctor during the Antarctic winter when he badly injured himself. Supposedly the CIA doctor waved a magic wand over him and he was miraculously cured because he couldn't get off Antarctica during the winter months. I really bought into his miraculous cure story because I thought it could be possible that the CIA or military would want to treat an important casualty of war or maybe a politician that was injured in a way that was miraculous but it turned out that you the smart youtube viewers especially a doctor who saw his injury said that it's a common injury that sometimes miraculously cures itself given a few days bed rest that he had he could be up and walking without a magic wand but now he's back talking about neutrinos in the antarctic the ice cube facility this time tracking UAP. So that got me thinking. It's a really good story, but is it? You're gonna to go to a conference and get funding for a neutrino detector for UAP that you don't even know what they are using a scientific instrument in Antarctica that detects neutrinos. Hmm. I think he's onto something, but I think he's got the wrong end of the stick. A bit like, David Gersh overheard, misinterpreted something true. Crash recovery, yes. Extraterrestrial material, yes. But not necessarily from the planet Zog. The world is full of extraterrestrial material, metals from space. Most of it from our solar system. It would be good to find extraterrestrial material that is interstellar. Thank you, Avi Loeb, for going all the way to the South Pacific and looking for interstellar material. That would be very interesting. But a question for Avi Loeb. Hi, Avi. When you find the spherical, obviously re-entered material at the bottom of the Pacific, how do you know whether they're from our solar system or whether they're interstellar? What's the signature of our solar system that is different from interstellar material? I'd like to know. But back to Ice Cube and neutrinos, I realize I know somebody who actually works at Ice Cube. So I asked them, do you detect UAP? And they were a bit coy about it because they're actually funded by Raytheon and they are using Ice Cube to detect something. Secret. So I think I know maybe what's actually going on under the ice in Antarctica using the ice cube neutrino detector and that is to detect radioactivity. You can't shield a nuclear reactor or even a warhead from emitting neutrinos. Neutrinos are classically the fly in the cathedral. They have no mass perceptible. They're not magnetically charged, so they're not attracted or repelled by anything. Every day, lots of neutrinos go right through you, right through the Earth, and carry on. Nothing stops them. They're very hard to detect. But also, you can't shield nuclear reactors from emitting them. So is it possible in a funding debate, rather than saying, we'd like to build a UAP detector, Raytheon, who are running Ice Cube, said, can we have money because we think we can detect the position of enemy nuclear submarines. Oh yeah, sure, go ahead. 
but to do that you'd probably need more than one neutrino detector a triangulation so where would you build other neutrino detectors to find submarines but first of all i'm going to take a break because i bought this this is my new lathe and mill and it's been keeping me busy so i turned to my patrons and asked them to research two questions oh boy did they deliver thank you my patrons Question one is, can neutrino detectors detect the emissions of, from a reactor? And the answer is yes, but the smart patrons who work in that field know their stuff and said it would be very hard. But think of over the horizon radar, tons of clutter from everything that it sees thousands of miles away. You're only interested in things that move. So over the horizon radar detects slow moving ships, slightly faster moving vehicles and fast moving aircraft. The trees, the buildings, thousands of miles away, it throws away. It's looking only for things that move. So if you can throw away the millions of neutrinos that you're finding from space, from natural sources on Earth, and look at neutrino sources that move, what neutrino sources, what radioactivity, what reactors actually move? Hopefully not many of them. Aha, submarines. They definitely move and we need to know where enemy nuclear submarines are and possibly warheads. So the answer is yes, you could potentially build a neutrino detector for moving radioactive neutrino sources. Rather than UAP. Sounds fundable. And the second question I asked them was, where are the other two? Because you'd probably need three to triangulate the positions of the submarines. And they just said Greenland, Hawaii, and very surprisingly, under the North Sea in the UK. I went, really? Yeah, there's a neutrino detector already funded by American money and British money run by Sheffield and defense contractors under the North Sea in this mine called Bulby. Personally, I would build one in Hawaii, either on an island or an array in the deep ocean to find Pacific nuclear submarines. And why not build one in Greenland? Very similar to the Antarctic, deep, stable ice on top of bedrock. It would be the same technology. I bet there's one there already. So thank you, patrons, all of you who made interesting comments about neutrinos, UAP and radioactivity credit at the end of this film while I go back and play with my lathe. Now, I really like making films for you, but it's really great having smart people who can actually contribute to ideas and research. If you want to become a patron, get involved actually in social media science. Join today. The link's in the description. And that's why I say because of you, the truth is out there.